Hey, what's up? This is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps. I want to show you a tutorial on how to get started with auto layout. And I'm going to show you seven different ways to add auto layout constraints using this tip calculator. So we've got a user interface defined for iPhone 8. You can see that I have it running on the iPhone 8 simulator. If we go ahead and put this on the iPhone 8 Plus, you're going to see that things don't look right. We're not going to have everything centered correctly. And that's why we need auto layout. So I'm going to show you seven different ways to add these constraints. And I'm going to show you my setup real quick. I have a trackpad on my left hand. And on my right hand, I have a Logitech G502 wired mouse. I always use two devices when I'm working with my computer, my Mac. Uh, I just like zooming in. It's super handy to move around a storyboard file if you have multiple things. So just do a two finger uh, click and drag, or in my case, that's a tap and drag, and I just move my fingers around. You can do the same thing on a MacBook Pro. On my left side over here, I do have a MacBook Pro that I can just uh, do the same gesture on. The other one's just a little bit more convenient because it's uh, a little bit lower, so it's more ergonomically sound because I've got my MacBook propped up on a rain desk uh, stand. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about number one. We're going to talk first with the trackpad and there are two different ways that I'm going to show. The first one is to just use the, the trackpad as a, a left click. And so anytime you click on a trackpad, it's considered a left click. So you could uh, click and drag, and you'll see that it'll move stuff around. That's not what we want. We actually have to do a right click in order to add these auto layout constraints. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the control key. And it's actually easier on a laptop than it is for me because my trackpad, um, I don't know. I usually use my right hand when I'm doing this on a laptop. Uh, when I'm doing it at my desk and I have the external, uh, I can just do control and I can click, but it's a little awkward for me, I would say. So I'm going to go over to my laptop and I'm going to hold the control key and then I'm going to click where I want. So let's say we want to set up a, a relationship between this element and this element. I'm going to do that with my laptop, let go, and we'll set up the vertical spacing. All right, when we see red, that means we don't have enough constraints defined to tell it exactly where to go. So it doesn't know and it's going to be floating off in space somewhere. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to have to do is add some more constraints. I'm going to use the, I can also do a right click. So the control and then the, the click with the trackpad or the tap with the trackpad and drag is what we need to do. Now it's important that we do control and drag because if we just do a tap, what you're going to see is the outlet co connections and the actions. That's not what we want we need to actually drag to another UI element. So you can drag to itself if you need to set up aspect ratio or you drag to another element. Now, the big thing I want to point out here is I would always recommend dragging diagonally as much as possible because it gives you the most options. Apple's got this thing. So when I drag just this way, it only gives me some of the options. And if I drag uh, the other way, it gives me some others. So that's what's called the context sensitive thing. I find it a pain in the butt. I just want to see them all. So I would recommend dragging diagonally. So at least you can get two edges. Uh, it just means less clicks in the long run. All right, so I need the leading space, which is going to be the left side. And uh, the other thing that you want to do is hold down shift. And I didn't do that for this one. So if I wanted to, I could undo that or I could just drag in the diagonal in the right direction. So I'll just do that. And I held the wrong button there. So I'll just do command Z to do that. Uh, Undo is very useful with auto layout and any UI stuff that you're doing. So I'm going to hold the control and I'm going to one finger click and drag diagonally to the top right corner. From here, I will now, you can see it says hold shift to select multiple or hold option for alternate. So if I do option, I can see other options here. And if I hold shift, I can select multiple. So this will save us some clicking. So we're going to click on the trailing space, which is going to be our right edge, and then the top space. And then we have to make sure that we click on Add Constraints. All right, so that's using the control click. We can do the same type of action if we do the two finger click, so I can drag to other elements. Now, I already have the constraints that I need for this, so we'll move on to another UI element. This one we need to set up so that it is going to be centered uh, in the very center. But before we do that, let's just set up the constraints to the other element. So I'm doing a two finger click. So it's two fingers down on the trackpad and drag. And I'll set up the horizontal spacing. And I'll do that two finger click. And now I'm on the wrong element. So I'm going to hit escape or drag to nowhere uh, to undo that because I don't want the constraint. 
Uh, once you pull up the menu, you can just press escape to cancel it or click off of it. I need to set up this constraint to the right, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, I can set up two constraints here. I can set up both the, the horizontal spacing as well as I wanna center this vertically. So these all need to be in a row, so I'll add those constraints. That's a missing constraint that I had, so I'm gonna use that trackpad again, two finger click and drag left to set up the center vertically. So that's gonna put them all in a row, which is important. Um, but now we're gonna see that there's some layout constraints missing. You'll see that there's some red elements here, and that's because these don't know where in the screen they're being centered. And so now I'm gonna switch from doing the trackpad to our third one, which is doing the control and left click with an actual mouse. So I'm gonna use my right hand now, I'm gonna hold control, and I can set up those layout constraints. So let's do this one. So this is number four. Sorry, no, this is number three. Uh, so I do a control click and we need to just drag either to this way or to this way. We don't wanna drag straight up because we might not get the right option. So I'm gonna let go and we're looking for center horizontally in safe area. So we go ahead and do that. These things should hopefully go blue if we've set out the, the proper layout constraints. We can test it by running the app and so that's the control left click. So that basically does a right click action that gives us the options. So that's one way to do it. Another option is we can right click and drag. So if you have a two button mouse, then you can do these things just as well. So let's go ahead and add uh, this constraint for this one. So I will do a right click and drag up. I'll drag diagonally so that I can get both the, see we want the, the vertical spacing, which is the distance between the two, I'll hold shift and we want to center horizontally. Now, sometimes I'm dyslexic. So let's say I clicked on center vertically and I added those constraints. We'll see that we have a red conflict. You see that, that zero and this red bar. That means that something can't be satisfied here and things aren't gonna appear where we expect them to be. And if we were to run this, you would start seeing like weird behavior. So I can quickly and easily just do command Z to undo this change and you can see it's gone. So let's go ahead, I'll right click and drag. So right click and drag, this is our, our fourth option for setting this up. We want the horizontal space to hold shift and we want to center horizontally. We want this in a column. So we'll do those two, we'll add those constraints and then we're good to go. All right, so that's how to get started. You can see that when we had the, the conflict, the thing actually just disappears. So that's the type of thing that you will see if you've done it wrong. Uh, if I rerun this again, you should see that go away. All right, so next up, let's talk about the document outline. If you do not see this sidebar, that's because there's a little icon down on the sort of left side of your canvas, and you have to click on that to show it. Now, you'll have to hit any of these little triangles to show these areas, and we can actually add constraints between elements here. We get the full set of options for all different sides, which is super useful. So these are all of the options that we have between different elements, it's very useful. Now this becomes mostly useful if we're talking about something maybe on the bottom. There's no way for me to drag on the bottom with the right click menu option to the containing view. I cannot get the bottom space. Uh, if you know a trick on how to do this, let me know. Um, I find it near impossible to set up those constraints. I guess maybe I could drag and it's still not gonna give me the bottom. So that's the frustrating part about the context sensitive menu. So to get around that, what we can do is we can drag, right click and drag uh, using any of the techniques I've shown you so far. So now we're working on, this is number five, where we can drag from the storyboard canvas, which is this area, over to our document outline. Now, what I wanna set up is the relationship of this, what we call the bottom edge in my case, since I've labeled it, to the view. So we'll set this up and I need the leading, the trailing, and the bottom space to sort of pin it to the very bottom. So we're gonna be on this edge, this edge, and this edge, and we can go ahead and add those constraints. So that is the fifth way of doing it. Now we can also do this uh, just by, let's see here, which ones haven't we set? So 15%, we can do this fully on the the document outline between layers. Now this gives you more flexibility if you, there's a certain layer that you can't easily get to on the canvas because you've got everything sort of layered up multiple times. This will allow us go from 15% to 
Now I have to go to one of these tip callouts, but I don't know which one. So if I hover for about two seconds, it gives me a preview. So I know 15%, if I'm looking at it on the diagram, it's hard for me. I can point to the screen, but you can't see that. And this is the one I have to go to. So we can set up this layout constraint. Again, I see the full set of options. It's a little bit less, um, doing this approach, I would say only works for containing views because it, you can sort of understand it. Once we start talking about like interviews and stuff like that, I find it hard to see the physical relationship because there's there's a lack of context when I'm doing the, the normal dragging, which I showed you earlier. So if you're just doing this, uh, I wouldn't recommend this for this particular instance just because it's hard to know if you're hitting the right thing and it takes a little bit more time. Because uh, as you could see, we had to wait two seconds. Now, if you have everything labeled perfectly, uh, that's not a problem. So we need to set up this so it's in a column. So we need to center horizontally, and then we need the, the vertical spacing in between them. I'll hold Shift. We'll center horizontally, and we'll do the vertical space. Click Add Constraints. That should be good to go. So now if I rerun this again, let's see what our layout's starting to look like. We should see that 15% is now centered like it is here. We don't have the label set up just yet, but that's okay. Um, and it looks like something's wrong with this one. I've got some kind of weird constraint here. So I must've selected the wrong one. So I'm gonna get rid of this constraint because that's not what I wanted. And we just need to make sure that this is doing center horizontally and the vertical space. I think that's what was missing. If I rerun this, we should see that it's working. So that's how to add between elements. Again, it's much better if you're going to use this side. It's if you're going to use the document outline, if you can't access an element. So uh, if this label on top was really big, we wouldn't be able to select this image view. We might want to then get at that image view, the tip call out by using the document outline. And if we want to set up a relationship to the containing view, we can set that up here. All right. So that is uh, all of all six of those methods are just working with sort of the context sensitive nature. There's another set of methods that we can use, and that is with the pin menu at the very bottom. Now, this will save you time in certain situations, but it's not always going to be the right approach. And so you have to sort of judge based on the UI. I find that the way I've presented it so far is the most typical way I go about designing the auto layout constraints. Sometimes if you're working on like a calculator button and you've got like five across and five down, uh, the pin menu down in the bottom right corner of your storyboard canvas is actually very useful. So we can do alignment for lots of elements and add lots of constraints in a few mouse clicks. So that's useful. So that is our alignment constraints for edges and centering. And then we also have this one. So this won't work in all situations. And I'll show you an example of what I mean. So we did the 15% and we could do that in one click and drag. For the, the, the 20%, we can't do all of it because we don't have options to all of the, the options here. If I want to center this in a column, I need to center the horizontal centers. And so that's different than centering horizontally in the container. So you have to start thinking about this. So we work through these different options. That's what we need to do. So I'd have to do it here, which could work. Uh, and if you had multiple elements and you want to do them all at one, on all in one go, we could actually probably do all three of these in one go. And I'll actually see if I can do that. Maybe, no, that one won't work. Let me think about it. Um, so I could have done this a little bit differently if I had done that approach. And then it would have been just two passes if I optimized correctly. Uh, again, I don't always know what I'm doing when I'm just getting started with the layout. So I sort of just play it by ear. So that did the one, but now we need to set up some kind of uh, horizontal, sorry, a vertical spacing. And there's no easy way to do that with this menu. Uh, this is good if I, I, I need a whole list of buttons to, to go between, but if I select this one, which is really kind of what I want, uh, it's going to add two constraints, and I only want to add one constraint. I only want the, the constraint between these two elements. Um, so actually what I have to do, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, is I probably have to select just one of them. All right, so this is, so it's just another click. Um, so we have to unselect one of them now in order to do it this approach, and I can just do the top constraint. So that's, how, that's our workaround. It's just more clicks. Um, you can't do it in, in two goes. So if we run this, we should be able to test to make sure that that 20% is now aligned with the bottom of the arrow. All right, so that is, that is all seven of the, the methods for adding constraints. I do wanna show you uh, another quick example 
because uh, as you're doing this, you're not always going to get blue right away. Sometimes you'll get some uh, other colors. So if you see red, we can fix that just by adding the right constraints, the ones that are missing. Uh, but I'm going to show you something different with these right here. So for these, uh, I want to do, I would like to do, I can't in this example, uh, I would like to do horizontally in container, but these are not containers behind them. They're actually on top of an image, so it's not contained. Uh, so that's not going to work for me. So I actually have to use uh, this method of dragging diagonally within here, holding shift, and I want to set up both the center vertically and center horizontally, add those constraints. All right, so this is what I want to point out real quick. So on the pin menu, there is this option to update frames. And if we go ahead and do this, it's going to shift it down. Now, if I zoom in here, shift over, you can see that at the bottom of this, we have a little arrow graphic. And the, the problem is if I center this based on the actual dimensions of the graphic, it's going to be too far down. And what we actually need to do visually, it needs to be in the center of this top area. And the, the graphic itself is bigger because of this little widget on the bottom. And so I don't want to do that option. So that was the update frames option, which shifted it down. What we do want to do is we want to update the constraints. So here we have the, the triangle TIE fighter button, and there's this option to update constraint constants that will shift it back up. So now it's the appropriate amount. You can see that it's going to be offset by negative 3.5 points. Okay, so that's how to do it. I'll just do these two real quick. We'll drag diagonally, hold shift, and we want center vertically, center horizontally, add constraints. Again, if you ever mess this up, you can always undo and just redo very quickly. So I'm holding shift, I'm right clicking and adding those constraints. All right, so I'll select both of these. So if you do this to a bunch of them, you can then quickly fix these constraint constants and that will make that color go away. So now it becomes all blue. And that's all we needed to do to get that to work. That's all I'm gonna show for this demo. You learned the, the seven different ways of adding constraints, either doing the trackpad approach or doing the the right click or the control click or the uh, the document outline approach. So you can see we've set up all the auto layout constraints for the top portion of the app. I could go through and I could set them up for the, the bottom as well. Uh, one other tip on this, this should be a stretchable graphic. It is, it is set up correctly, but it is not stretching. So I'll select this image view. It's currently set to center. We'll set this up to aspects. Let's see, what do I want? I just want to fill it. So that's going to stretch it. It's a vector graphic, so it should stretch. And if we run it one more time, uh, click the like if you learned something in this, you can see that that is now stretching correctly. All right, so sometimes it's your image views are not set up correctly to render. And so you just need to make sure that they're set up to stretch or your graphics aren't stretchable. All of these graphics in the sample project that I have here, which you can download on my blog post, are set up to be either vectors or uh, they are uh, designed to stretch. So you can play around with that, uh, especially the button in the bottom edge. Those are two stretchable graphics. And if you like this video, just click the like button. You can subscribe on the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions about how to add auto layout constraints, let me know and I can make more videos. Uh, I'm really looking forward to see what you can do with this. I know that auto layout can be a little bit challenging. So I hope that this was helpful and just comment down below in the video if you have any questions or you can jump on over to the, the blog post where I talk in detail about these steps as well as I have the source code so that you can follow along with not only the starting version of this project but also the final version that I have right now so you can pick up from where I left off and you can finish the user interface. All right, so I'll catch you later. Have an awesome day.